when John and I started uh, 119 Ministries, we had such a hard time. We people coming to us with all these deep theological questions and stuff. We're going, oh my gosh. And so it really forced us to dig into the scriptures. And, and I mean, questions like, you know, like, where's heaven? And I'm going, oh, okay, where, where's heaven? Okay, yeah, okay, I, I, uh, I got it. Oh, okay, <laughs> two. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's not two. Okay, no, no. Four. Oh, no, 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 okay, that's a stupid question. What am I thinking? It's not four. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> Oh, no. Green. Blue is blue screen. No, no, it's not that. Okay, 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 it's not. <laughs> lavender. No, it's not lavender. I can't, I, no, I used that one already. No, I can't say that again. I can't. I can't. I, no, I used that one too. <laughs> what was the question again? Okay. It was things like that. And going through times of trying to learn. And guys, listen to me. You're not always going to have the answer. And it's okay to say, I don't know. And that's when you say, you know what? That's a great point. Let me look that up for you. I'll get back with you. And you start digging. That's called learning. Now, that all being said, I want us to read a verse. 2 Timothy 3, 14. And it says, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Title of this message is simply, How? Do we defend the gospel? Well, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity and privilege to be here today and to speak forth your word. I pray right now, Father, you open our hearts, all of us, including me. I pray, Father, that you will speak through me the very word straight from your throne. Nothing more, nothing less. May they pierce into the depth of our hearts so we can truly become doers of your word and not hearers only, to learn and understand how your word is flawless and life in Yeshua's holy name. And everyone agree by saying, Amen. Amen. Look at what it says. Now this is Paul talking to Timothy. And he says, how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures. Wait a minute. He's known the scriptures from infancy. This is Paul talking to Timothy. Folks, get this down in case, in case you have not heard or thought about it. The New Testament believers did not have a New Testament. Think about it. So what is Paul telling Timothy, talking to him about? The Holy Scriptures, everything that was written before. This is so crazy awesome. And it says all Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Righteousness. Remember we learned the other day when I said how in the gospel a righteousness is what? Revealed. And we go back to Deuteronomy. It says, for this shall be your righteousness if you obey. The righteousness, the Torah, learning to, and training in what? The Torah. Righteousness, that's what we're to be getting trained in through the scriptures. Old Testament scriptures. Now, and it says all scripture. Now, may we never forget this, okay? Don't forget this. Because when everyone tries to say, well, you know, all scripture, well, yes. But who, what was he talking about? Because everyone likes to use those, that verse from Paul, okay, and apply it to the New Testament. And then they completely ignored the Old Testament. Go to context. Paul said this. New Testament was not written yet. Make sure they keep it in context when they want to bring it up. All right? Romans 15, 4 says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. Everything that was written in the past, so we can have hope. Hope. Everyone say the word hope. hope. Now, 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the what? Hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Now, let's go back for a second. With hope. Where did the hope come from? The Torah. Everything that was written in the past was given to give us what? Hope. What's the hope that we have in the Torah? Be prepared 
to give an answer. But now here's the thing that I think so many people are missing and failing left and right. The last sentence. But do this with what? Gentleness and respect. Not pride and arrogance. I'm right, you're wrong, I'll tell you why. <laughs> Whatever, you just put a wall up, you blocked yourself in, bro, because I'm not going to listen to you. And we're all guilty of it at one point or another. And you know as well as I do that when someone comes to you with a pride and arrogant attitude, what do you do? <laughs> Step back, and you let them talk, and then you walk away. Everything they said went <laughs> one ear out the other. Why? Because of their arrogance. That's why Paul is saying, guys, do this with gentleness and respect. They don't have to agree with you, but be the one that presents the truth in love to them. Don't be the one that, puts, that causes them to put a wall up to the gospel. Amen? Amen? In order to defend the gospel, we have to have a foundational understanding. It is so important to have this foundation that I'm going to be giving you this morning. Isaiah 40, verse 8. It says, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. Now, what would be the word of God to Isaiah? What would it be? Well, let's see. Deuteronomy 5.4. Yahweh spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At that time, I stood between Yahweh and you to declare the word of Yahweh because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up to the mountain. He said, and it continues on. The word of Yahweh is the word of God. What did Moses declare? The Torah. That's the word of God. That is the word of God that Isaiah is talking about. Now notice how 1 Peter 1.24, for all, he's quoting Isaiah, for all men are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is what he says, check it out. And this is the word that was preached to you. We already know now, Isaiah is referring to what? The Torah. Paul is, Peter, I'm sorry, is quoting the Torah. And then he says, and this is the word, the Torah, that was preached to you. Cool. Hey man, Steve, thank you, all right, moving forward. Now the same word is not just written down forever. It doesn't just exist forever. No, it stands forever. Steve, what are you talking about? When it says it stands, it's a jurisdictional term. Like in the court of law, the ruling stands. It can't be overturned. It stands forever. This exact same word is used for, that is used for stands is the same vowel point for vowel point, everything, I'm talking the exact same word, is found in Numbers chapter 30, verse 9. This same word, where it's found as binding, it's the same word, the exact same word. So whenever Isaiah is saying the word of God stands forever, he's saying it's binding forever. It's not changeable. You can't overturn it. It's a jurisdictional term. Deuteronomy 19, 15. The, again, the exact same word, vowel point for vowel point, where it says it is to be established. When something is established, it's solid, it's in concrete, it's not going to move. This is stuff you guys have got to understand. So when people are going to ever quote to you Isaiah, the word of God stands forever, you let them know. This is what it means. Yahweh's Torah is established. It's firm. It's founded. It's never going to be overturned. Never, ever. Isaiah declared it. Peter preached it. Am I making sense to you so far? This is stuff you guys, listen to me, capital N, capital E, capital E, capital D. You need to understand this. This is the foundation to, of any discussion you have with someone. Numbers 15, it says, the community is to have the same rules for you and the alien living among you. Okay, same rules. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Let's hit pause. A lasting ordinance for the generations to come. He didn't say an ordinance to last until this point in time. Or a la an ordinance that's going to last until I send my son. No, it's an ordinance that's to last for all generations to come, period. No ending. All right, next, it says, you and the alien shall be the same before Yahweh. Verse 16, the same laws and regulations will apply both to you and the alien living among you. Showing us what? Yahweh's word is for everyone. You're going to hear a lot of people say, well, 
Israel, the Jewish people, they're the chosen ones, and yeah, it's just for them. They're the chosen ones, and we're just over here. Okay. Yes, Israel is the chosen generation, okay, the chosen people. To do what? To shine the light. What's the light? The Torah, the Word of God. So, and remember, <laughs> that can go really deep. How far do I want to go with this? When you are grafted in, guess what? You're a part of Israel. Okay? This is not replacement theology. I oppose replacement theology. We are grafted in. We don't cut the tree down and wear a new tree. We are grafted into the original olive tree. Amen. Whether you are Gentile completely, have no history at all with, or, of Israel, or you, maybe you're part of one of the lost tribes of Israel. I don't know. I don't know who I am as far as I'm concerned. For me, I'm a Gentile who had nothing to do with, the, with Israel at all, and he, by his grace and his mercy, allowed me to come in and worship and serve him and follow his ways. All right? So anyone wants to debate stuff, that's not, I, that's not for me. So the Word of God is for everyone. It's for everyone. That's the foundation, though, I want to get established, is that it stands. It's solid. It, it's a jurisdictional term that means it cannot be overturned, ever. So with that being said, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Any interpretation to any verse that opposes the Word of God, of Yah the Word of Yahweh, that stands forever, is wrong. Let me say that again so it gets into your head. Any interpretation to any verse that opposes the word is wrong. All scripture has to be interpreted in harmony. Does everyone say the word harmony? harmony. Have you ever heard people singing and you hear, it's just, it sounds awesome. You go, oh my gosh, they sound like they're just so good. And then you hear this one guy go, ah, oh, oh. And you're going, oh, because it doesn't what? Go in harmony. He's off doing his own thing. And too many times we have believers, honest and pure heart, pure intention, okay, but not knowing, they're interpreting things that are opposing the scriptures. And while they think they're in harmony, they're over there making a noise that's just, oh, dear Heavenly Father. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So, we can't have an interpretation to any New Testament verse that makes the Word of God null and void. Someone say amen. amen. This is why Yeshua said this in Matthew 5, 18. It says, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Just a second. Yep, earth is still out there. Okay, we're good. So, we know the Word of God, nothing has disappeared. Not one jot or tittle, okay? Everything, not the least stroke of a pen has been removed. Knowing the Scriptures in context is so important. Now, there's no way for me to go over every single debate that people will bring to you to oppose the Torah, okay? Especially in the writings of Paul. But I'm going to go over a few, give you some basic understanding. But what I just gave you already is enough for you to take on anything that comes your way and don't get scared don't be like me <laughs> Two, four, <laughs> whatever take your time let the father reveal it to you in time and if you need help then you can go to someone else say hey what do you think on this what how, how do we do how do we approach this this is a good point and you're going to find them and you're going to be it's some great debates okay i want to cover them here a little bit now but you guys have the basics now many take the words of paul and twist them second peter three fifteen. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Now listen closely. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking of them in these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, listen, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the what? Error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What's the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ? What, did he, what knowledge did he give forth? What did he preach? 
the Torah. We grow in the knowledge of the Torah that Yeshua, Yeshua himself gave us. But we see here, guys, right here, if anyone brings to you a, a letter from Paul and he starts twisting it to show Torah's done away with, you know right now, Peter done warned us, okay? Now, you have the foundation. All scripture has, has to be interpreted in harmony. No crazy singers, right? But I want us to look at a few things regarding Paul. Romans chapter 7, verse 21. Romans 7, 21. So I find this law at work. This is Paul, remember, who they say Paul says the law is done away with. Okay, so this, let's remember, our keeping context, who this, is, who this is. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. Let's hit pause. I wasn't going to do this. How many has ever been doing something really good, all of a sudden an evil thought just comes into your head? I want you to know, the enemy is going to do all he can to distract you. The mind is the battlefield. Okay, and you have got to take every captive thought, as Paul even said, gives us. In, he says, take every captive thought and make it obedient to Yeshua. Whenever we do this, whenever the enemy comes at you, you have got to take those thoughts captive. Okay, Paul is even saying it. Man, when I'm doing good, evil is right. He's one of us, guys. He's not somebody, whoa. He's a guy just like us. So here we see Paul is saying, it's right there with you. Now, verse 22, he's going to discuss this struggle. Verse 22, for in my inner being... I delight in God's law. What? He just said, I delight in God's law. But everywhere else, we can say, well, he said it's done away with. He just said he delights in God's law. He didn't say it was done away with. Verse 23, but I see another law. Uh-oh, wait, what? Another law? At work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind. Law of Torah. Making me a prisoner of the what? Law of sin at work in the members. What a wretched man I am. How many has ever felt like that before? Yeah, me too. You're not alone, let me tell you now. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then he says, now this is what I wanna bring out. So then I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law, hallelujah. But in the sinful nature, meaning when I fall, a slave to the law of sin. Deuteronomy 11, 21, or 26. I tell you the truth. Behold, I, I give you life and death, blessings and a curse. Blessings if you what? Obey. The curse if you what? Disobey. So what's he talking about? The curse of the law. It's when you disobey, this is, it's a law. It's, it will happen. You are now under a curse. But Yeshua delivered us what? From the curse of the law. Another verse. Again, from Paul. This is one that people, a lot of people use. Now that what I just gave you is what people seem to just completely overlook. Galatians 3.10. All who rely on observing the law are under a curse. Oh my gosh, Steve, they got it right there. What do we do? Oh my gosh, Steve, they got us at the first right there. I don't know what we're going to do. It says it right there. We're under a curse right there. Okay. Third word. I even got it highlighted for you. All who what? We don't rely on observing the law for our salvation. Salvation comes by faith in Yeshua, and then you walk in that faith by obedience. I have a teaching on this. If you ever get the opportunity, it's simply called the tutor. Galatians had people coming in and saying, this, it was Pharisees, believing Pharisees, but they're still holding on to their old dogma. And it says, you have to do this. You have to do that to be saved. You can't do this. You have to do that. They made it all about do's and don'ts. Suddenly, they lost the realization that we are saved by faith and we are to walk in obedience unto Yeshua. And it all became nothing but do's and don'ts. Paul confirms this even deeper. It says, you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You cannot be saved by the law. The law has never saved and never will save ever. The law wasn't meant to save people. Like I said, I think I said the other day, Yeshua, Yahweh didn't come to those in Egypt and say, hey guys, I'm going to deliver you, but you've got you to follow my laws first. If you follow these laws first, then I'll deliver you out of Egypt. He didn't do that. Faith got them out in the Passover lamb. And what did he do? 50 days later, he showed them how to walk in that faith. So if anyone ever tries to pull up the Galatians card to you, and they will, you show them. Paul is talking to a people who are trying to be saved by the law. 
We do not believe in that. Are you with me? Some will take these verses from Paul and say, you know, we don't have to follow the law anymore, guys. This is all done. You know, it's, uh, the laws, they'll, they'll say, Paul told us the law is done away with. You have to ask them this. You ask them with all your heart. Did Paul follow the law? Ask them that. And if they say no, then say nicely, kind, gentle. Are you sure about that? And then, they, and then give them this, Acts 21. Take these men. These are the, this is the leaders in Jerusalem talking to Paul. Join in their purification rites and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. They're doing a vow. Then everybody will know there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. This is a, they were talking specifically to the Apostle Paul. He was living in obedience to the law. Now, if... They say then, responding to you, well, yeah, well, he's a Jew. You know, Jews are supposed to follow the law. That's just how it's supposed to be. You know, they follow the law, and then, you know, and then the Gentiles, well, we don't have to because it's done away with. Well, wait a minute. If it's done away with, then why are the Jews following it? Okay, because it wasn't done away with. Now, but the thing of it is, if they try to say that, then that means there's a way for the Jews, and there's also a way for the Gentiles. That's what they're going to declare. Okay, a way for the Jews and a way for the Gentiles. Now, then what happens when we go to Ephesians chapter 4? There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, Torah, when you were called. Listen, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. One faith? This is Paul. One faith. There's not a faith. There's not a way for the Jew and then a way for the Gentile. No, there's one faith. It's not in my slides, but you can go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Paul says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Meaning what? He's talking to Gentiles, the Gentile believers who came into covenant, which means they're not Gentile anymore, but you know what I'm saying. So here we go. He's talking to Gentiles, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ, which is what? Following Torah. I can go so much more into that. Anyone wants to tell you you're under the law? Listen to me. We live in America. We have tons of laws. But you're walking in freedom. Right? Because why? You obey those laws. But the second you break that law, guess what? You'll be under arrest. You are now under the law. When you break the law, you are under the authority of the law, and punishment of that law is now upon you. Okay? Depending on what the judge will say to you. Now, so whenever you are under the law, is it when you're obeying the law or when you break the law? When you break the law. So we're not under the law. Those who break the law are the ones who are under the law. Now, I want to close out with this. I hope and pray. I'm, can, I get, can I get three more minutes? Yes, please. You, listen to me. When the, times, when the time comes for someone to come in, and they may come at you harsh and hard and arrogant and whatever, don't be that way. Show them love. Just give the reason for why we believe what we believe. And know that you are not, listen to me, you are not called to change their mind. You are not called to change their mind. You are called to present the truth in love. What they do with it is up to them. Okay, so don't debate. Jesus, Yeshua, never debated anybody. Did you know that? Read his whole life. You'll never find him debating anyone. He threw the truth out there and walked away and let the seeds fall where they fell. So you cannot change people's mind. You cannot open their eyes. You cannot open, as, no matter how good you are, memory verses and all this other kind of stuff, you will never be the one to change someone's mind or open their eyes. How arrogant of that is uh, of us if we think it's us opening up people's eyes. Never. Yeshua himself said, John 6, 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. I will raise him up at the last day. It's the Father who opens people's eyes. We are simply the tool and the instrument that he will use. Check this out. See that guitar? Cool guitar. I was watching the guy play earlier. He, I can tell he's really good. But you know what? That guitar sitting by itself can do nothing. It's an awesome guitar. Matter of fact, you can get a $5,000 guitar if there's even is one out there. And go, wow, look at that guitar. But it will sit there and do nothing 
until the master musician picks it up and does something. We are a guitar that can do nothing unless he chooses to use us. And when he uses us, it's him, not us. He's the one who even tunes it. So even when in, on your best day, it's because he tuned you up and got you ready. We are simply a tool, amen? So we plant the seed, water the seed, and move on. Let the Father do what's to happen. Remember, in closing, everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Don't forget that verse. When you, when people, you just got to ask people, what is sin? And you show them this verse, it's breaking the Torah, guys. And then also, lastly, I said twice, the very root word of Torah means to hit the mark. Write that down. The very root word of Torah means to hit the mark. So when you don't follow Torah, you're missing the mark. Guys, you can do this. You can defend the truth. Take your time, learn and grow. And remember, God's word cannot be overturned ever.